Hello guys, so this is going to be a super quick video explaining how to set up Kubernetes on AWS using KOps. Before we do the setup, it is important to know in what scenarios do we need to use KOps versus EKS Cuttle. So AWS provides its own Kubernetes service which is Elastic Kubernetes Service EKS for you to be able to use Kubernetes clusters. So the benefit of that is that the master nodes are managed by AWS so you don't have to worry about upgrading them making sure they are always running and all that is all handled by AWS so there can also be many reasons for which you might want to set up master nodes and control them by yourself some of the reasons could be like the pricing or you would want some specific configurations that don't come with, come with EKS so that's what KOps helps us with. Like EKS Cuttle is a command utility for EKS service. With few commands, you can have a EKS cluster up and running. And similarly, KOps is a command and utility when you want to set up a cluster in which you are yourself managing the master nodes and the worker nodes. So that's what we'll be doing in this video. So here is the Kubernetes documentation, which also talks about that how do you install Kubernetes with KOps, and I'll add this link below in the documentation. So one of the very first things you need to do is install KOps. So the way to install KOps would be you can use these commands, which is like you can do it on Mac OS, or you could do it on Linux. Right? You could also use this is the KOps website, right? Which is kops.sigs dot kts.io so this explains things in detail so very first thing is you need to first have kubectl installed so you can easily find the documentation how to install kubectl and then like the documentation also points here like installing kubectl so this is the command line utility that helps us to talk to kubernetes and uh, this is the command line utility that sets up the kubernetes Right, so execute brew update and brew install keyops on command line, and you should have the keyops up and running. So after you install keyops, the next thing you have to do is set up your AWS IAM account. So you could use a root account, so or you could set up a new user. The preferred way is to set up a new user, which I'll show here. So go to users, and you can say add a user like i already did so i have this user and this user needs to have permissions so you can click on add permissions and select the specific policy which you want and the specific policies which you would need are mentioned here on kop side so it would need amazon ec2 full access route 53 full access s3 full access im full access and bpc full access so in so i did the shortcut and i just provided the full administrative access right which which provides full access to all the resources to this user. But you could limit it by providing these specific access. So KOps list, like how you could do that, uh, instead of just using the console, which is the website, you could also do the same thing, creating of the user and providing these policies and all can also be done through command line utility by executing these commands. So, so KOps has been installed, the user has been created, the next step is a bit tricky step which uh, takes some time which is setting up of a hosted zone on on aws so the steps are mentioned here like how do you configure dns so for me i did the simple scenario which is scenario one you we i purchased a domain via aws but there are other few scenarios which are mentioned like if you want to use uh, your cluster just for a subdomain that you purchase like for a domain for a subdomain and under a domain which you purchase for AWS, you can follow the other steps. And if you have domain with some other registrar, it also explains how you can still do it. Right? But I'll just follow the first step where I purchase the domain from Route 53 itself. So here I'm at Route 53 and you could see, uh, let me go to dashboard. So in the dashboard, you could see the notifications. Uh, the resources jomo.click this is the site which I purchased and it says domain registration successful and I purchased it a few days ago uh, so once we purchase a domain 
you could just find a domain here you could check and purchase it and one or you could just also transfer using this section once you have purchased the domain you would automatically see this hosted zone the hosted zone would be set up for you which maps your domain name and now we'll be using a subdomain right like i could use this jomo.click www.jomo.click or jomo.click for my main site or my other functionality but i could use a subdomain of that to register my cluster and that's what i would do i would just have my cluster to point to kops.jomo.click by the way if you're new to this channel please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button because it motivates me a lot to make more such videos and if you have any feedback please let me know in the comments below so that i can improve for like my videos in the future so all this would be more clear as we set up the cluster and then after that when we see all these resources within uh, aws all of this would make more sense so now we'll set up the cluster using kops so to check whether kops is installed run kops version and to create the cluster i'll just copy this command which you already have with me so kops create and then the cluster and then the cluster name so this is a subdomain of my main domain which was jomo.click so we i'm just i would be creating the cluster using the subdomain and then these are the availability zones under which the master nodes would be us east 1a 1b and the state i would want to store it on in this s3 bucket so better don't save it on your local save it to a remote s3 bucket so i would not say yes so right now it's going to print that or what all will it create it would not create it so it says cannot retrieve uh, it the bucket so we need to first create the bucket also so i'll just go ahead and i'll create the bucket So it says inferred AWS as a cloud provider from zone this and all and then it will print like what all all the stuff that it's going to create right all the security crops the VPC and all but it doesn't create anything like all the secrets and all that will create and again like the routes and uh, all the routing table the stuff that will change so you could go through the full list and just make sure and go through and understand how exactly and what are the exact resources that Keops creates. So once you go through it, and now to make sure your cluster is updated, you would just execute this command, which is chaos updated. You don't need to use minus minus admin because like whatever user you have, that should be able to update the Keops cluster. So I say Keops. So now it's gonna put, like it's gonna use, uh, execute the commands and it is going to create a cluster for me. It normally takes a few minutes, it could be five or 10 minutes. So I would, yeah, so it says like the cluster is starting, right? So it takes around 10 minutes for the cluster to be there. And you can validate whether the cluster was created or not using this validate command. So I say kops validate cluster, the name of the cluster, and I say like wait for 10 minutes and keep validating it. So let's execute the validate command. So you can see here, it created this master node, right? And it's the subnet is that. So, but it is saying the validation, the API server, which is the Kubernetes API server, is not up yet because we just started the creating the server. It takes a few minutes. So I'll pause my video and we'll try to validate the cluster after like 10 minutes or so. So here you can see my cluster is ready. One of the things to note is I deleted the cluster and recreated it. This time when I recreated it, I created with the uh, minus minus admin uh, admin flag and then and then you could see that and also like what I had was I had a cube config file so it was not able to override it and uh, so I just created and now you can see like the command which I execute was uh, cube cops keops validate cluster and then it tells me that I have these instances running one master and two nodes and uh, these are this is the node status and all and we could also go to aw like we could also run kubectl command 
to see the nodes and what we'll also add a deployment so we could say cube cuttle apply minus f so i have a deployment file here so if you see the deployment file um, so it deploys pods with this uh, with this image and we have five replicas of the pods so if you say cube cuttle get all now you could see like so these are like three are running and two are in creating state right and then you could see the default service and all so this is how easy it is to create cluster using kops so let's quickly jump to e, uh, ec2 uh, or sorry aws console to see so i'm just reloading now when we go to ec2 dashboard you could see the instances that are created so if you were using eks service you would not see the master right because you don't control it but since we are using kops you could see the master and you could see the other nodes also right and then like if you need to delete the master or delete the nodes and all you could also or if you want to log in like so you you have to manage these nodes by yourself and you could also check subnets and all everything and all the resources that are created and in the route 53 when we check now you will see uh, that we should have uh, i think entries for chaos also let's see yeah so you see we got new entries for apa.chaos.jomo.clip so this is this would be hit by kubectl and kubectl will call this and uh, uh, to talk to the EPS servers which Kubernetes is running. So I hope this video was useful to you and be easy for you to set up Kubernetes using KOps. So if you like this video, click the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel and also give your feedback that how can I improve upon my videos so that it's, it's helpful for others and I can share more such and I can create and share more such videos.